we have here our pet cemetery. It's kind of overgrown right now. And these are the guardians of the, the cemetery. Yes. Oh, my name is Shani Nielsen. I'm the director of AWARE. We have over 350 dogs at the moment, 60 cats, a horse, a rabbit, and two chickens. We're a no-kill shelter. Well, the dogs here, what we do is we take them in, we have them spayed, neutered, vaccinated, socialized, and then we look for homes for them. This is the path that they bring the dogs up. Take them all the way to the bottom. It would be good if you guys went down with the dog walker maybe and saw the route that they get to take every day. Fiona! I came to Guatemala because my mother said I should be a secretary. I hated that. So I came to Guatemala. Then I started realizing that these poor little dogs on the street, nobody was doing anything for them. And so little by little, I started collecting them in my house in Antigua. So I've been here at AWARE for a week now, and I've learned a lot about dogs. I have a dog. I thought I knew everything about dogs. No. <laughs> There's a lot more to learn. It was like May 3rd day here maybe. I was walking out of here and I saw a little puppy that was just tied to the fence. So of course I called Shaney. I was like, uh-oh, you got a new one. That seems to be happening a lot. Did you find some ladies with your cat? Well, Martin is the pack leader, so to speak. <laughs> he has a way with, with the animals. He complains a lot about them, and he likes the cats better because they uh, don't bark. Oops. We're inside the cat house. Part of it, anyway. No, we have 60 cats. They're all spayed and neutered. Yeah. But I have people call me all the time, another cat, you know. I go, hold on, I'm trying to renovate the, uh, the place here first. Yes, aren't you? Raccoonas, Raccoons, and Vincristine. Oh, this is my 12th year of coming to AWARE. In fact, this is where I started doing my work in Guatemala. They've built a lot more cages since I first started coming here. No matter where in the world you work at shelters, is the ingress is always far greater than the egress, unless you have some sort of huge marketing program that takes a village to get done to get these animals out of the shelter. Well, unfortunately, they're under a lot more stress because we have a little bit of overcrowding. Um, probably we have some parasites being external and internal. And then we also don't have the socialization for these animals to where they work with, with humans on a daily basis. So all of those things are very important to make a successful adoption program. With this many animals here, it just can't happen, I'm afraid. It's pretty tough because she's so busy. I mean, when we've been here, she's gotten three phone calls for people looking if she could take a dog. Yes, we, we're friends. We have our discussions and we have our agreements and our disagreements, which happens in the shelter community. I think the big disagreement we have is when it's time for an animal to be euthanized. You always want to try something where I say, you know what, maybe it's time. And I think we, the other place we disagree on is some of the behavior issues where some of these guys, you know, aren't handleable by the staff. And, you know, we sit there going, you know, why do we keep them around? And I remember being nipped in the butt by Sneaky Pete several times. Oh, so. uh, but Pete's great. <laughs> Could you imagine yourself ever doing something like this? No. <laughs> it's not easy having running this and uh, having a, a, a marriage and you know, keeping everybody happy if you, as much as you can. 
and because we're an animal shelter and we depend on donations, it's, it has its depressing moments and sadness when you don't see the money coming in. But um, continue on, keep working, be positive.